samen en we praten met Steven de Vaar. En het gaat over Fong Shui. En de vraag is eigenlijk, kun je de inrichting van je huis, de inrichting van je kamer, verbeteren? En kan dat met eenvoudige middelen? En in dit geval kunnen we iets leren van wat de Chinezen daar al duizenden jaren over hebben gezegd, geschreven en in de praktijk gebracht. Steven de Vaar, welkom. Can we improve on the way we live? With feng shui? Yes. <laughs> yes, we certainly can. Uh, feng shui is an old uh, practice and study in many oriental countries. And many people ask me, is there proof that feng shui works? And in fact, through the centuries, they've been studying homes of politicians or artists and writers, successful people, where people had difficulty and problems in their life or their family. They went to those homes when they studied different individuals and looked at the home to see, is there any shape of home that could be particularly good for a writer, an artist, a musician? And over the years, they've learned certain people who are successful, there are certain parts of their home which can be associated with a different career, different their occupation, their lifestyle, their marriage, their finances. And uh, yeah, there definitely is an influence in adjusting your home and changing your life. And when we say adjusting your home, feng shui means looking at where the furniture is, where the doors are. Yeah. Basically looking at the layout and the way you live in that house and how the energy goes. Is it, is it something you, you, you picked up uh, in school or where did you learn this? <laughs> I found a, a book about 16 years ago when I started and started reading it and then applying it to one room in my home and wrote the dates down in which I did an adjustment. And what I say an adjustment is, is a change in your home. Could be a color, could be a painting, could be moving furniture. After I did certain adjustments, it actually correlated with the specific area that I did it in with finances or relationships or career and I saw certain events take place within a time period that I made an adjustment. And so I continued to study it and kept on seeing certain things happen <clears throat> around certain times close to when I made the adjustment or changes in my home. And so that's when I became more interested to study it on a full-time basis. Now, most people will think this is some kind of magic. You replace your your chair in one corner, you replace a desk, you do something and then suddenly things change in your life. How, how does that work? Is it something that influences the energy of the, of the person living there and therefore it influences his life or how does it work? It works both ways. It works from the outside in and from the inside out. Meaning the inside of the person makes some changes and they can see some changes in their life. They also can make changes outside, meaning their environment. And when I say their environment, I mean their home or their office. And see some changes happen internally. So there is a balance between what you do externally and internally. Both can influence each other. In feng shui, they focus on changes made outside and influencing or creating new opportunities in your life. So when you make a change in your home or office or environment, which could be plot of land, or redesigning your business card. Associated with the particular change you made, you'll see some also an adjustment and change in your career, your marriage, relationships. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, I thought, I don't know if this is so uh, important. And I started making some changes, as I said. And I saw drastic changes happen. And each individual is different. It's not like all of a sudden, one day later, you're going to see some adjustment or change or opportunity present itself. But you can never guarantee 100%, right? Of course. But, but I started to see, one after the other, many changes happen. And then when I uh, gave suggestions to someone else, I also see changes happen in their life. But now some people <coughs> tell the same story about the clothes you wear. They say, change your clothes and you change your career. Isn't it that because people say f uh, focus on their immediate environment and, and, and bring it according to these feng shui uh, principles into, say, a career perspective, 
that they in fact focus their own energy for this career perspective and then out in the world think a little bit more about a career and how they look at maybe other things and then the results will come. Well, in a way, when you change your clothing or color of your clothing, that aspect is also used in feng shui. I give people advice on logos and color arrangement, design, placement, numbers of items in an advertisement. And so that is changing energy on your environment, but just closer to you. And then, say, your bed, for instance, you spend one half of your life in the bedroom. That's a little further away than your clothing, but still, it's personal. Right? Then your living room or dining room or kitchen, you spend less time than in the bedroom. That's a little further away, but still, the change is there. Then the outside of your house, it's a little further away from yourself. So each change does have a different type of influence on you. But as I said, even the color of your clothing, in a sense, that is like feng shui or changing your environment. Even the way you walk to work. If you take a path where you see many gravestones or graveyard, as opposed to a beautiful valley or mountain or a uh, nice landscape, the influence unconsciously and consciously is going to have an effect on you. That is, you've chosen your environment to walk in the same way you choose your environment to live in. And they both have an influence. Yeah, now you do this, uh, you teach, like this week you're teaching in Amsterdam, but you also consult. You consult companies. Yes. Uh, uh, tell me something about it. What, what kind of companies and what, what do you help them with? I was very surprised after several years of practicing feng shui and giving advice of what type of businesses and individuals would approach me and ask for advice. But it's literally um, any type of occupation or business, anything from a politician to a doctor to a lawyer to a dentist to a musician, artist. Um, I designed a parking lot near the Philadelphia airport in the States, 500 car parking lot, which I never thought in the beginning that I, they would need advice on it or want it. But sometimes people who may seem like they're not interested in new ideas or oriental ideas or Asian ideas, they can surprise you and want some oriental principles or ideas about how to set up their own business, whether they're professional or just an individual. Mm. In the States, the, 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 the modern Western equivalent of what you do is that called industrial engineering, uh, you know, designing layouts for factories and stuff like that. And there they use uh, theories like uh, scientific management and time and motion studies, but also colors. They have studied a lot of that work. Is there a relationship between that, say, modern thinking about um, the way you arrange things and what you have learned from this very old Chinese art? Yeah, there definitely is a relationship. Uh, the art of feng shui is not necessarily owned or discovered by the Orient, although they have created, through their practice and study, a more advanced understanding of environmental influence than many other countries. Although in several countries outside of the Orient, many people practice something similar to feng shui, simply because they've studied like laws of nature. I mean, it is written everywhere, you can say, in a stone, in a rock, in a tree, all laws of nature and energy. And so anywhere on the earth, when they study laws of nature, they'll start to understand yin and yang, or feng shui. In Japan, they have their feng shui, but they call it kaso. That's more house diagnosis. Feng shui literally translate as wind and water. And that, you can say, is a visible aspect of energy, right? like the water itself, and an invisible aspect of energy, which would be the wind or air. Mm -hmm. But both show a very flexible, natural life movement of energy. Now, what you're talking about, that's called like space planning or traffic flow in a business. But in feng shui, they call it energy flow, energy movement, similar to an acupuncturist uses and directs the path of energy in the body when he uses acupuncture needles. Right. The same energy, that ki, ki, that's the Japanese uh, word for life force, and the Chinese word is chi, chi. That life force is a vital force and necessary to understand or to study if you want to understand feng shui or acupuncture. Okay, well, Amsterdam is a city of wind and water, so <coughs> most appropriate for feng shui. And uh, thank you for this interview.
Okay. Thank you very much for having me.